This is how we started out, believe it or not. No, I, I, I remember. That's hard to. Just remember that we put me some duct tape on it. <laughs> Why is it vibrating during the circuit? Well, I, I did get smart up. My notifications are off. So I, in theory, we should not get them. Excuse me. Can I ask what's the event? So it's a church service. This is First Presbyterian Church of the Covenant. Wow. Yeah, we do this every. What the last Sunday of August? We're usually we oh, find a place. Yep. Yeah. Looks great. Yeah. Welcome to stay. We got refreshments in the back if you're interested. Well, thank you. You're welcome. It's funny everybody. You're getting smart. Maybe we ought to just pitch a tent. Well, I wasn't worried about. 
about the weather. Yeah, the weather's perfect. Today it's perfect. Like other, other years, it's like, oh. I don't want to set this stuff up in the month again. We did it during the winter one time, didn't we? Yeah, we were inside. Yeah, that wasn't good. And does it have to be the same? Thing? Because we had to scrape the ice off the sidewalk, and we put salt down, and that was illegal. And Oh, oh yeah, you can't use salt down. It's like, oh, because oh, okay. the ice was like, we're not going to let people slip. Exactly. <laughs> people sit all the way over here, all the way over there, and nobody in the middle. Check this out, More and more people are moderating towards bringing your own seat. It is more comfortable. Oh, sure. You don't have to sit here. Right, and they'll come here. Yeah. I mean, that's the nice thing. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, you still need to take this. Uh oh. That usher is here. Look what it's for. Yeah. City has to offer. Um, before we get, begin our worship today, we do have a few announcements. First, um, can we give a round of applause for hospitality and membership? Yeah. Not only did they provide coffee and juice and donuts this morning, but after worship, we have a little brunch, I guess you could call it. Um, so immediately after worship, there will be food, and um, we'll, we'll turn it over to them to tell us everything that we have to do, um, but there's tables here to eat, so hopefully you can all stay and join us for a meal around the table. Um, secondly, next Sunday, September 1st, it is Labor Day weekend, which I know is a busy time for most families. However... Our Sunday Suppers is going to be hosted by us, and Pat Tracy needs a lot of help. Right now, she only has about five volunteers. She needs a couple more volunteers. She also needs sheet cakes so um, for the dessert. So if you're able to volunteer that day to show up to help serve, that is wonderful. That's usually from 3 until about 6 p.m. Um, or if you're able to drop off a sheet cake at the church on Friday or Saturday or Sunday morning, that would be great. So please reach out to Pat Tracy if you're able to do any of that. Her email is in the bulletin. You can, you can um, email her and let her know what you're able to do. Uh, also, you know, fall is right around the corner and... I think today is a beautiful example of that. It's a little cool, but the sun's still shining. Um, and we could definitely hear the sound uh, of the summer coming to an end. And fall is right on its heels. And so things start happening. One of the things is our ministry to students, particularly to Gannon College students. If you um, want to help the campus ministry team, Welcome students back with hot dogs or coffee are September 6th and 10th. Um, it's all wet weather permitting, but if you are able to do that either in early in the morning, 6.30 to 9.30 a.m., or 9.30 to 11 p.m., please reach out to Richard Sheasley or anyone else on the campus ministry team. 
Um, it's just a fun way to meet people in our neighborhood because uh, we meet a lot more than just college students. So it's, it's a really cool way to be a part of our neighborhood. Also, if you are a student, um, a college student particularly, I have these books. Um, Seth has them in the back. They are 40 reflections for college students. I know that sometimes uh, life can get a little crazy in college, and sometimes you might not make it to Bible study, or you might not make it to worship. Um, this is a way for you to uh, get into the Word a little bit and, and to hear some good words. And so it's called Unscheduled Grace, and um, it's just this little thin book, but you can go and ask Seth for it after worship. Marwa and said, it, can you be a professor and still get one? Yes, Marwa, because you are a Gannon professor, you are allowed to have one. <laughs> Pat, I guess that's the same thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, I think that's enough announcements for today, but there's lots happening, so please read through the bulletin. There's lots coming up uh, with the crop walk with our fall theme, with classes and faith formation. So please read through it. Um, if you have any questions, find me, find Pastor Chris, Seth, whoever you need, whoever, whose ever name is in here, um, and we will help you out with that. Um, let's turn our hearts and minds to worship. If you will turn with me to page one of our bulletin for the call to worship. Please read responsibly the bold print. We come to be nourished by the word of God. We seek the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We come to be challenged by the word of God. We seek the guidance of God, the creator. We come to be surprised by the word made flesh. We seek the ways of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Please rise in body and spirit as we sing our first hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Jesus said, beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. We come before our God, who is full of compassion, to ask forgiveness and mercy. When in our excesses we consume more than our share, while others go with basic needs unmet. Forgive us, merciful God. When we are blinded by our affluence and fail to reach out in care and concern. Forgive us, merciful God. When we are overwhelmed by desires to acquire and consume more than we need. Forgive us, merciful God. When possessions cloud our view of you and your gracious love. Forgive us, merciful God. At the beginning, at the end, and in every time in between, the good news speaks to us of God's tender mercy and love for us. God comes not to punish, but to give us with peace, not to judge, but to grant us forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us greet one another with you. Some words of peace.
that's incredible. Not a lot of places have lighthouses. Some of them don't exist anymore. But we are really lucky to have these big, big, big buildings. Does anybody know what a lighthouse was used for? Yes, that's a perfect example. And you said for ships as well. It was meant for people that were steering ships that maybe at night when they really couldn't see what was ahead of them, or it was really thick fog, or there was a storm, to know where the land was. And, and there was different lighthouses for different things. Some lighthouses were meant to warn people that you're getting close to really rocky terrain and you don't want to get your ship close here because you might, you know, hurt the ship in some way. You might crash into the side of the coast. Other lighthouses were used to say, hey, you're getting closer to safe to a safe area. You can dock here. You can come on in. This is a good spot for your ship. And there would be a light that would flicker and they would know that that is the lighthouse. And I don't know how they would tell the distance, but really good captains were able to navigate safely their ships using the lighthouses. I don't know. I don't know. That's, they were just really good at it. It was a skill that they had. And we don't really use lighthouses anymore because we have other technology that lets us know where we are, but here's the thing about lighthouses. It would tell us, it would warn us, we could see the light in the distance, but it didn't give us a direct pathway to take. It didn't show us what direction to turn, either right or left. It wasn't laid out for the ship. They had to navigate it on their own, but the light would help guide them. We often call Jesus our light. Jesus is our light. Jesus doesn't give us the exact instruction manual on how to live day to day. He doesn't tell us what to wear or what to say yes to, what to say no to. But Jesus gives us a really good idea of how to live a good life. He's like a lighthouse guiding us. We get to choose the path but he can help us along the way. So today, we're gonna to do something kind of fun and funky for all of us Presbyterians. <laughs> that means you're also involved, by the way, out there. It's not just for the kids. I'm gonna invite Miss Sophia and Mr. Nathaniel up, and they're going to teach us some moves. Yes, I said moves, you frozen Presbyterians. <laughs> to a song called My Lighthouse, which we sang a couple of weeks ago. And this song has really big significance because the youth sing it every time we go to Montreat or to a conference. And it's just a really fun song. So I'm gonna turn this over. Here you go. You, now you have to listen to these two, okay? All right, so Nathaniel's gonna show us the first half of these movements. And as he's doing them, you guys can stand up and you can also see how these movements go. And same idea goes out for all of you guys out here. <laughs> Pay attention. Nice, nice. You can practice with us. That's a really good idea. That way you're ready for the actual thing. All right, so Nathaniel's going to show us the first few steps. All right, so you're going to put your hands up like you're a lighthouse. Yep. And then you're going to clap twice. This goes along with my lighthouse. So somebody's going to say my lighthouse, and then you're going to clap, clap. And then they're going to do it again. My lighthouse, clap, clap. Perfect. And then shining in the darkness. So shining in the darkness, I will follow you. And that's the first half. And then it'll be the same thing. My lighthouse. My lighthouse. I will trust the promise. I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. I will follow you. Stay too short. So do a motion like rolling waves. You need to do that a bunch of times. It's going to be like a lot of that. Like, there's a bunch of shores, so you're just going to go to the And just keep shoring, basically. Keep and then it'll repeat a few times. Yeah. All right, are we ready? We're ready. Yeah. All right. We're going to do this together. Okay. All right. Ready?
Thank you so much. All right, before you guys disperse, I have one more thing for the kiddos. You guys can come over here. Unfortunately, I don't get to hang out with you guys to color light houses, Ugh. but that's okay. All right, I gotta grab my bulletin here. Will you pray with me before we go into our meeting? Holy God, we thank you for this day. We know that as the breeze comes and goes, it is your spirit that fills this place. So we ask that your spirit fill our hearts and our minds. Open up our ears and our eyes and our minds to see you and to know you, to love you more dearly this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Our reading today comes from Ecclesiastes. And before I go into this, um, Ecclesiastes is, is a very short book of the Old Testament, um, and I used to read it at the beginning of every fall, right before I started classes. And so as I was thinking, what could we talk about for today as we're getting towards the end of summer, going into fall, I thought, why don't we look at the book of Ecclesiastes? We've been following different people, different uh, voices in our scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament, unknown people, or people we don't know very well. And so today we're going to look at Colette, and that is the Hebrew word for teacher, and it is the voice of the teacher that we hear in this passage. So hear now the word of God. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes everything ever returning on its course. I said to myself, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is madness. And what does pleasure accomplish? I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly, my mind still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to do, to see what was good for people to do under the heavens during the few days of their lives. I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself and I planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasures of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers and a harem as well, the delights of a man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I, decide, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor, and this was the reward for all my toil. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. Then I turned my thoughts to consider wisdom and also madness and folly. What more can a king's successor do than what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. The wise have eyes in their hands, while the fool walks in the darkness. 
But I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. And I said to myself, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said to myself, this too is meaningless. For the wise, like the fool, will not be long remembered. The days have already come when both have been forgotten. Like the fool, the wise too must die. This is the word of the Lord. What a way to begin a service, yeah. right? <laughs> So like I said, this is the words of the teacher, but it's not the only voice in the book. The book gathers the work or the words of this critic, right? It sounds like the teacher is cynical, but he is simply saying what is true. The word that we hear as meaningless is actually hevel. Say that, it's a fun word. Hevel. Hevel. Everything is hevel. The word in Hebrew actually means smoke or vapor. Have you ever watched smoke from a fire? It creates beautiful art in the sky as it goes up. And as soon as you try to grab it, it dissipates, it scatters. The same thing with vapor, if you've ever breathed it out during a cold winter's day, right? You can create this beautiful burst of energy that you could see, you could see your breath. And kids like to do this as well, right? Mom, look, <sighs> see my breath, <sighs> right? And they're breathing on you, and it's great. But it, it goes away as quickly as it comes. That's what the teacher is trying to say. It's not that life is meaningless or we cannot find meaning in the work that we do. It's that life is fleeting. We are here for one moment and the next we are not. As much as we want to control life, we can't. We can do our best, right? We can make sure that we have our 401ks. We can make sure that we have life insurance and car insurance, just in case anything goes wrong. We can pay off our houses. We can buy the best food and make sure we go to the gym every day. How many of you do that? Go to the gym every day? It's a dream, right? It's a wish dream. But in the end, we know things to be true that the people who have amassed wealth could lose it in an instant. The people that made all the right choices, went to the right schools, chose the right career, made their parents proud, something bad could happen. And we know that for the healthiest person, you can get a diagnosis one day at the doctor's office that changes your life. Life is heaven. Reading. We can't control it. And so the teacher goes in and he says, well, I want to know some things that we can control. The ways in which um, I can take control of my life and make meaning out of it. And he looks at three things. The first is pleasure. Who likes to have fun? Who likes to party? To drink and make merry with good friends and family? Who likes to go to amusement parks? Do all those fun things. Go to the beach daily, right? I wish I could go to the beach daily. And he says that he does all those things, but in the end, that's really not what makes life meaningful. So then he looks at something else, and he looks at career, what we do, our work that we do. And he says, I did this. I, I poured my heart and soul into my work, and I am masked everything you could have, all the things that you would want to have in this life, I, I received, but in the end, it didn't matter. And we know people like that. And maybe we are people like that. Workaholics, we call them in our 21st century. That pour their heart and soul and even their life, their family lives into work. And maybe they take for granted those that are with them along the way. And he said that too is meaningless. And then he comes to the final thing, wisdom, learning. He says, but I did that too. 
that didn't give me any meaning either. And we can see that too. You know, when I was younger, I remember getting my first F in high school. I, I can't even tell you now when I got that F in. But I was a, a daughter of two teachers and a, a granddaughter of a principal and a great granddaughter of a superintendent. That's terrible, right, Jackson? Right, right. So what do you think was expected of me? Get A's, do well in school. And so I got my first F. And I remember being so shocked and after the, you know, the bell rang, I went down to one of the teachers. She was the drama arts teacher. She always had her door open. And I just came in and I sat down and I started crying. And she says, what are you crying about? I said, I got an F. I don't know how I'm going to tell my mom. I don't know how I'm going to tell my dad. And this means that my life is over. Nobody's going to take me in college. <laughs> They're going to see this F and they're just going to look right past me to somebody else. And she laughed. She laughed. She said, oh dear, nobody's gonna remember this one grade a year from now. And 10 years from now, nobody's gonna care what you got in history for one exam. I don't know if it was history, I really can't tell you, right? <laughs> That's how much it was meaningless. But I didn't know it then, and it, and it took me a while to tell my mom at home, and it, it, the same thing happened. I told my mom and she smiled. Sometimes the things that we pour ourselves into, we become so blinded by them. So what are we to make of this? Where do we go with this? With the words that the teacher has said? Well, the same words um, that we hear from the teacher, we find in Ecclesiastes 3, this might be something that you've heard before. For everything there is a reason, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather those stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Even though life is fleeting, the promise that we get from God is that things can change. Things can transform. There's a season for everything under the sun. So if right now you are in the valley and you are struggling with conflict or with grief or with indecision about what choice to make next, there is a season where you will know. You will be at peace. If you are struggling with finding happiness and instead you find yourself with those that are mourning, it is okay, that is what is happening now, but today is today and tomorrow it could mean that you are dancing, that you are laughing once again. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus talks about worry. He said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, 
Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you worry, worrying at a single power to your span of life? If then you are not able to do small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, the teacher, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? Do not be afraid, he goes on. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is right before a few people come up to Jesus and ask, Have you heard the news recently? And they talk, they talk about something that has happened in, in a town, a few towns over. How people were killed by the Roman soldiers. And then they talk about another thing where a tower fell on a group of people. And they say, is this because of the choices they made? Is this how God is, is uh, treating them? Are these the consequences to their actions? And Jesus says, no. We are all alike. We all fail. We all make mistakes. We're not really good at doing the good that is ours to do all the time. But life is heaven. It comes and it goes. But one of the things that I find uh, helpful is the story of the rich young ruler. Because I think today in our culture, that's the tension that the rich young ruler feels in the story is the tension we feel all the time. In the rich young ruler, we know that this young ruler comes to Jesus and he says, how can I gain eternal life? And we always hear in the future, when we hear eternal life, our ears hear the, the world to come, what happens after I die. But in Judaism, in that culture, when they said eternal life, it was how to live an eternal life now, how to live a life that is pleasing to God right here and right now. And so Jesus asked them, well, you know, have you heard the commandments? He's like, yes, I follow everyone to the T. Okay, good, good. Right, that's wisdom, right? He's using the wisdom that he's gained to make the right choices. But as he's having this conversation with the rich young ruler, Jesus looks at him and says something that I don't think anyone would want to hear. I know I wouldn't want to hear it. He says, sell all you own and give it to the poor. That would be a hard pill to swallow no matter who you are, whether you are rich, whether you are middle class, or whether you are on the margins. And he's unable to do it. Or maybe even give Jesus the answer. And he walks away. But we don't know the end of his story. We don't know the exact choice he made. But I think that is for us to decide for ourselves. The answer is not there because it's a question for us. What do we do with that? And so I'm going to leave you with this. I want everybody to put their hands out and open. Because life is heaven, we cannot grip on for dear life. Instead, let us live with our hands open, receiving the blessings that God is giving us for today, and be willing to let go of the blessings that are not ours for always. God 
gives and God takes away. But we are meant to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Live in the now. Worry about today, not tomorrow, and not the things of the past. That is all heaven. It will disappear. God is forever. Our hope is with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. All right. One thing that we do at uh, these beach services is we ask for prayer requests. So if you have a prayer request that you want to speak up on, please raise your hand. Um, and we're just going to speak it and we're going to include it in the prayers of the people. Does anybody have a prayer? Yes, Rob. So a friend of Rob's is currently homeless and couch surfing, so we're going to pray for a stable place for that place for them to stay. Anyone else? Go ahead, Marley. Right. For students, whether you are pre-K all the way through masters and doctoral students, and for all the administrators, the teachers, the professors, the principals, all of those people, let's pray for them and for their return to academia this fall. Anyone else? Uh, for my Luann wants us to pray for her father who broke his hip. He's 91 years old. So she prays for healing and um, just for a good future for them to make some decisions. Yeah. You know, I want to say thank you for So Judy wants to have a praise. She has a praise that her son is home and his family is with him. And she thanks you for all the prayers for her family. And her, the patients that she serves as a nurse during the week, um, they both have cancer. And so um, we're going to pray for them for healing. Anyone else? Yes. I have Here. a friend who is uh, undergoing chemo for uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, so Tammy has uh, ovarian cancer and she's undergoing treatments right now. We're going to pray for her. Anyone else? Do any of the kids have prayer requests? Anything? Yeah. Oh, you wish your brother doesn't have a hurt tummy. Okay. We're going to that. <laughs> All right. Yes, Peter. Uh, healing for Paul. Healing for Paul. Let us pray. God, you are good. Your promises of life and mercy, healing and forgiveness are true and they are good as well. We can count on you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who showed us a way to live with our hands open to the world. Despite all of the evil and all of the brokenness and all of the sickness, Christ lived with his hands and his arms wide open. Let us do the same. Show us the way. Remind us. Have the Spirit whisper in our ear as we go about our week to open our hands, to not live with clenched fists, trying to hang on for dear life to the things that we love. Trying to keep our wealth to ourselves. Lord God, instead, you turn us to our community, to our faith community, and to those in our neighborhood to offer the same thing that you give us, 
life. Words of life, actions of life. Show us the way, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that all of the prayers that have been spoken for the people who have cancer, Lord God, we pray and lift up their names to you. Lord, keep them steadfast. Give them strength to face each day. And we pray that the things that they are undertaking will help them, will heal them. We pray for those who are sick or have broken things. We pray healing over their bodies, that you once again will make them whole from the inside out. We pray for those who are without homes, without a shelter or roof to call home, to call safe. Lord God, we pray for those that they may find their way to an organization or a person or a place where they're able to make decisions. Lord God, we pray especially for the students and the teachers, professors, and administrators of all schools in Erie and farther away. Lord, inspire them for a brand new season. Give them the gifts of teaching and of learning and just soaking up everything that they can. Lord God, we pray for this faith community as we head into a new season, Lord God. We pray that you continue to pour out your blessings and help us bless others. Lord, shape us into the people you have created us to be. We pray this all in your name, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It is now time to give of our tithes and offerings. I believe Russell and Dale will be around <laughs> with the plate. Thank you. 
You may stand for our, our doxology.
Everything is heaven, but our God is forever. Trust in the one who made you, who formed you out of the dust. For to dust you shall return, but he is blessing you in the here and now. Live in the moment. Be at peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, look for Abdullah. Where's Abdullah? There he is. Follow that man. Really? So you're 